Good morning, fourth graders. How are you doing? How was your weekend? Did you enjoy it? Did you order pizza, John Michael? Did you have fun, guys, in general? Alexa, did you work on some lettering? Majo, more TikToks? Any random video, Carla? Barbie? Well, hope that you all had an excellent weekend. I did have a good one because I made cachapas, which is a Venezuelan dish. By the way, I never cooked it when we were in school, but well. If everything turns out well, I will let you know how it tastes next school year. So guys, as we usually have on Monday, this is our spelling practice. Remember that today is Monday, June the 8th, 2020. And you can always double check the contents of these spelling practice on your grammar goals book, Story Central, Shake Up Science, as well as on your contract, okay? Bear in mind that we have lots of words to revise. We have around about 40 or 41 words. These are the words that we're going to double check, as you can check, as you can tell, excuse me. These are the words that we worked on weeks number three and four on contract number six. They have neither, tug of war, halfway, non-contact, dips, stream, iron, paper clip, Field, hold, against, motionless, balance or balance, kite, comfortable, uncover, brook, ostrich, image, barrels, wood, fountain, overcome, shoot, stack, gravity, float, crowded, weaker, valley, stay, flying disc, release, below, timer, record, Mountain top, kind, skydiver, and reached. These are the words that we're going to revise on this June 8th spelling practice. That being said, let's get started, guys. Remember that we have already studied this word, so it's not going to be complicated at all. So we have, the first one is neither. Some people pronounce it like neither. Both pronunciations are okay, but I say neither. Second one is talk of word. Talk of war, remember. Next one is halfway, halfway. Non-contact, non-contact. Dips, dips. Let's see the different definitions for each one of the words. Neither is used when you want to say that two or more things are not true. I always give the example of Eva. We know that Eva is kind of picky when it comes to consuming food. She doesn't eat like fast food as, for example, we have Alexa who happens to like sushi the way I do. Or we have Maho who likes junk food like hamburgers and fries. Or we have John Michael eating tacos. No, she's kind of complicated at the things she eats. She eats. So she usually says... Teacher, you know what? I like neither tacos al pastor nor carnitas, okay? This is how you use neither. Now we have talk of war. It's a type of sport in which two teams show their strength by pulling against each other. Obviously, you know that motion affects force. And force affects speed. Obviously, the team applying more force will get their way through. That is to say, will be the winner. Halfway means in the middle of something or at a place that is equally far from two other places. Non-contact means without contact, okay? Without touching or becoming in contact with. Dips is when you put something into a liquid for a short time. Remember when you go to a party and you have like, well, not necessarily a party, but uh, you're snacking in your house and you have jicama. You usually have a dip, probably Valentina sauce or bufala, and you dip the jicama inside the sauce. That is the dip or to dip. Okay. Let's continue with the next five words. The next five words that we have are string, string, iron, iron, paperclip, paperclip, field, field, pole, pole. 
Let's see the definition. String is a piece of strong thin rope made by twisting, you can see the twisting here, by twisting very thin threads together used for fastening or tying things. Um, have you ever had the chance to move? Like you lived in an apartment and then you decided, well, your parents decided to move to a house? When we put things together, we use some kind of tape for the boxes, but you also use this kind of string to attach, to join different objects so that they don't remove, they are not removed and they stay into place. Now we have next one is iron. Iron. It is a chemical element that is common grayish color metal. Remember when we talk about magnetism, you need this element to attract the poles because if something is made of wood, it would repel. Remember sign Jacob. Double check it on page 120, which is the part of glossary. The paper clips, that's easy. It's a small piece of bent wire. Bent means that it's curved. It's not straight, as you can tell. Small piece of bent wire used for holding pieces of paper together. Usually grown-ups, when they are piling up different documents, they use these paper clips to hold them together. The centenarian, when I hand down the photocopies that Miss Vete gives me, I have them tied or joined by using paper clips. Next one we have is field. Uh, by definition, it's an area of land used for growing crops or keeping animals, usually surrounded by a fence. Okay? If your parents, your grandparents decide to have cattle, which are cows, or different kinds of farm animals, you keep them in a field. Normally, it doesn't have a fence, but sometimes it does. Now, the pole is a long, thick stick of wood or metal, often used for standing up straight in the ground or supporting things. This is a pole, okay? Sometimes you have exercises like pole dancing to help yourself gain more strength and control of your body muscles, okay? So these are the first words that we're going to study on this review of spelling. Let's continue with the next word. We have the words against, against, motionless, motionless, balance, balance or balance if it's a verb, kite, kite, comfortable, comfortable. By definition, we have that against is disagreeing with a plan or an activity and I will always think of David who goes against me all the time. If I say black, he says white. If I say hi, he says low. If I say yes, he says no. So he goes against what Miss Caro has to say. Second one is motionless. Motionless. It means without any movement, without moving. Okay? Um, if I see Miss Fernie, sometimes she inspires a lot of respect for me and I stay there with eyes, with eyes wide open and motionless. Okay? Now we have balance. It's a state where things are of equal weight or force. We see the pebbles, we see the different stones with the two pebbles on top. And the fact of having two pebbles here keeps the balance, okay, of the different elements. Now we have the kite. It is a frame, we see the frame here, with the shape of a triangle, covered with cloth or plastic and joined to a long string that you fly in the air when the weather is windy. To be honest, I don't know if you know this uh, kind of toy. Back in the days of the centenaria, boys mostly used to play with these kites. Okay, next one is comfortable. Producing a relaxing feeling of physical comfort, especially because of shape or materials. We see the girl is about to fall asleep and she feels comfy. She feels comfortable because of the materials. She is holding a pillow. And the pillow looks very soft. Let's continue with the next word. Okay, we have uncover. Uncover. Brook. Brook. Ostrich. Ostrich. Imis. Imis. Barrows. Barrows. Wood. 
wood. Now we have what is to uncover, is to discover something that was hidden. If you have a surprise, okay, let's suppose that it is, uh, I don't know, Eva's birthday and we have her a surprise for her birthday. So we are going to uncover the surprise and send a happy birthday song for her. After the coronavirus. Now the brook, what's a brook? It's a small stream. You see the, the canals and you see the river, and these small divisions are called stream. Now, what is that? It's an ostrich. What is the basic difference between an ostrich and an emus? Okay, the ostrich is a very large bird from Africa, also in Australia, that has long neck, see the long neck, and long legs, but these animals cannot fly, okay? The other one, what's the difference with the emus? A large Australian bird with a long neck and gray or brown feathers. Basically, the difference in the feather. Okay? And well, the origin, the place of origin. We have the burrows. Burrows is a hole dug in the ground that an animal such as a rabbit lives in. In this case, we have beavers. And not talking about just in beavers, but the animals, right? They dig a hole and that's where they live. It's a natural habitat. Then we have wood. It's a hard substance that forms the branches and trunks of a tree. Okay, guys, let's continue. Probably we'll have to videotape a second part. That's what I didn't want, but well, what can we do? Next one is a fountain. Fountain, okay? Then we continue with the word overcome. Overcome. Then we have shoot, shoot. Then we have snack, stack, no snack, I'm hungry. Stack, stack. And the last one is gravity, gravity. Now, what is a fountain? A fountain is a stream of water that is forced up into the air through a small hole, especially for decorative effect. You can also see in the middle of the squares in downtown Querétaro, you see the squares and you see a lot of fountains because it's typical from European architecture. To overcome. To overcome is to defeat or succeed in controlling or dealing with something. If you have a problem, you have to find a solution. So, that's how we say you have overcome your problems. For instance, this person probably was afraid of jumping to the other side of a hill. But he overcame his fears and he jumped. At the very end, he succeeded. Then we have the chute. It's an arrow steep slope down which objects or people can slide. Okay, you see the chute. Normally in playgrounds or aquatic attractions, you can find chutes. Now, what is a stack? It's a pile of things arranged on top of one another or another. For instance, when you go to I Hope, they have this promotion of eat as many hot cakes as you can. They serve it in stack, one hot cake on top of the other. I'm kind of hungry, right? Next one is gravity. Gravity, right? Yes, that is gravity. On Shake Up Science, it's the force that attracts objects towards one another, especially the force that makes things fall to the ground. Gravitational, the law of gravitational power. All the objects are naturally attracted to the ground, okay? And that's the action of gravity. Let's see the next five words. We will definitely have no time to complete all the words and definitions as well as the activity. They're going to be uh, covered in part two, which is going to be the final part, I promise. So we have. For next one, we have float, float, crowded, crowded, weaker, weaker, farther, farther, valley, valley, stay, stay. Okay, well, no, we're going to get to number 10 only. So we have float, crowded, weaker, farther, and valley. See you on part number two, number two of this video to check the instructions and complete the words from the spelling practice on this June the 8th.